Hey guys, uh, in this video we're going to set up our applications backend and we're going to use MongoDB which is a document database. We're going to use a remote service called MLab so you don't really need to install anything in your system to set it up. We're also going to use a free plan called Sandbox but if you are building something which is for the real world you might want to purchase a plan with more features we are also going to be using express which is a minimum and flexible node.js web framework it is the most popular node.js framework it provides robust set of features for web and mobile applications some popular frameworks which use express include mean, keystone.js and feathers and many more so to start we just going to go into our project folder and we're going to create a folder called server in this folder we're going to create a file called server.js so once we're in this file just open your command line and cd into the folder we just created then the next thing you want to do is to type in npm in it and just hit enter so it's going to ask us a few questions so the name of our application is going to be called server, it's okay. Version, it's okay. Description, just leave it default. Entry point, server.js. Just leave everything as it is. Then just type in yes. And that's it. So what this command does is it creates our package.json. So this is the file we just created with all the answers we provided. So now the next thing we want to do is to install node modules. So we want to install. I'm going to run npm install express. And we also want to install body parser. And EJS save. Uh, and uh, we also want to install MongoJS. So just add that also. Save. Okay, so now the next thing you want to do is to open our server.js file we just created. And we are going to require express. Now this is coming from the node modules we just installed, so it will be inside here. We have expressed there, so that's what we are requiring. And now we also want to require path, which is a core system module. That's why we didn't install it. So just say far path is equals to require. Path. And we also need to require the body parser. So we're going to say var body parser. Sorry, body parser. Go to require.
body parser. So we are going to accept data from our app and pass it and then submit it. That's why we need body parser. This is for our routes. We'll create a folder called routes where we are going to put in our routes. So in this folder we will have index. So I'm just gonna do another require here. Require routes slash index. We are also going to do for bookings require routes slash bookings so bookings will be the API we're going to create and use to work with MongoDB and now we're going to create our app variable the main variable for app app and we're just going to assign it to express now our app won't run until we listen to a pod so to do that I'm just gonna create a variable called pod going to assign it 3000 and I'm going to need to listen app dot listen Now pass in the port and we have a callback function. And I'll just console but log. I'll just say app. Let me just say server running on port. And we just post our port here. Now the next thing we want to do is to set up our templates templating engine. We're going to use EJS, which stands for embedded JavaScript. I'm just gonna comment this out and write views. So type in app dot set views or type in path dot join and I'll put in the directory name. And views so this will tell our app that our views are in a folder called views and we also going to tell our app that we are using EJS as the templating engine so I'm just gonna say view engine and passing EJS now in order for us to render files with an HTML extension we're going to do app dot engine and I'll pass in HTML and I'll require EJS and I'll do a dot render file after this we need to set up our body parser midway I'll just type in body parser midway I'm just gonna do app dot use body parser dot json because we are going to be using json we are also going to do app dot use body parser dot URL 
encoded and we're going to pass in an object extended and we'll say true and the next thing I want to do is to create our routes to do that I'm just gonna do app dot use so when you're on slash we're gonna use index we're going to create this very soon and then we're going to use app dot use slash API bookings so from now on if you want to interact with our bookings we we'll just do slash API then bookings so the next thing we want to do is to create this folder called routes inside our server folder so I'm just gonna create a folder called routes in this folder I'm gonna create an index.js and it's going to be a very simple file first of all I'm just gonna require express again like we did let me just copy this and paste it in here and I'm, go I'm gonna need also router And I'm gonna get this from express dot router. And now I'm going to use the router dot get. So any 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 time a person opens this route, it will be a get request. That's why we're using get. So get slash and we have a callback function which will have a request a res and next so for this for the response we're just going to do a dot render the HTML file index dot HTML. This will be this will render our main view. So now I'm just going to copy this and create another file for our route, which is for the bookings. So this will be bookings. JS. I'm just gonna paste this but right here instead of saying random I'm just gonna do a send and I'll just pass in some text in here just type in bookings route and save so the next thing we want to do is create the views folder so inside the views folder I'll just have normal HTML in there. I'm just going to create a new file called index.html. In this file I'll just have no more HTML. And here I'm just gonna do an H1 and type in hello world and save. Also going to save this. So now let's test if our application is actually working. To do that, I'm just gonna come here and do node server. Oh, we have uh, an, an error here. It says I misspelled require there. Just like this. Save. Oh, and also we cannot find routes bookings. I call this booking. It's supposed to be bookings.
And one more thing we forgot to do, we need to export the routes we just created. So we need to do mojo dot exports exports is equals to router and I'll do the same thing for the index save so as you can see now our server is running we don't have an error it says server running on port 3000 so now if we go to our browser and type in localhost 3000 you can see we're getting this text hello world which we have inside our HTML so if I go come here and type in slash API slash bookings You see, I'll, I'll get an error like this because I didn't specify this inside our router. So I need to come back here, set our bookings, and specify bookings and save. We need to run the server again. And now you see, we're getting this text bookings route which is this text we have here so instead of uh, running the server every time we, we can install an npm package called nodemon which will help us do that so it will watch for changes that you have so I'm just gonna I'm just going to do sudo npm install nodemon dash global I'll type in my password okay so now instead instead of running node server all the time now we can just simply do node mon and as you can see our server is now running on port 3000 refresh this everything is still working so now I don't have to rerun the server I can change anything here yeah? save come back here and refresh and you can see my change so now we want mongojs to interact with our database first of all you have to create an account if you don't have it already so after you've created an account, the next thing you want to do is to click here on create new. Then what we're, we're going to choose Amazon services and uh, select single node. Then we're going to select sandbox, which is the free one. Then you're just going to give your database a name. I'm just going to call this taxi app. and then click create the name you chose must be lowercase so, so everything has to be lowercase it's gonna call it taxi app and create okay so now everything is created now you just have to click on your taxi app so the next thing you want to do is to create a user so I'm just going to add a user and I'm just going to put in my name there and I also put in my name as the password and create okay so the next thing you want to do is to create a collection so I'm just going to create a collection called bookings so this will be my collection click on it 
and I'm just going to add a new document inside this collection so this is how you create documents with MongoDB so what I'm gonna do I'm just going to put in a username here just write in Eman then maybe I'll have something like pick up which could be an address this will all change I'm just trying to show you how the document will look like maybe drop off Okay, so now I'm just going to create and go back. And there we have our document created. So the next thing we want to do is go inside our bookings.js route and we are going to require Mongo.js. So I'm going to say Mongo chance is equal to require mongojs and then we're going to create a database object and set it to mongojs so i'm going to say var db mongojs we need to copy a driver connection here so to do that we just need to go back to the home of our database and there are two ways to connect to to a mongodb you can use the shell or you can just copy this driver we want to use this driver url so i'm just going to copy it and paste it here then for the db username I'm just going to put the db username I added before and for the password I'm just going to do the same and we need to pass in another parameter here which is our collection we just created it's called bookings so now for our get requests we are just going to remove this and I'll type in db dot bookings dot find this will take in a function which will have error and our bookings so we're going to check if we have an error we're just going to return response dot send the error otherwise we're gonna do response to json and I'm going to return the bookings so now let's check if our API is working so let's make sure our server started it's it's on already it's running so now I'm just going to go to localhost 3000 API slash bookings. And as you can see, it's returning the document we just created inside our collection. So we have username, the pickup, the drop off. This is what we just created here. So our API is working now we want to handle our posts so what we're gonna do is just create router dot post and we're going to use the same endpoint bookings 
so this will allow the user to save their booking I'm just gonna pass in request spawns next and what we want to say we're gonna take it from var I'm just gonna create a variable called booking which will be request request dot body dot data we'll create this object later on called data and then what I'm what I'm gonna do is just put an if statement which you say if booking dot username we're going to check if the username is present in the booking object. If it's not present then we're going to handle our error dot status 100 I'm just gonna pass response to JSON the error message which says get data but if everything is okay we're gonna put an else here I'll do db dot bookings dot save and what are we going to say we're going to save the booking and we have a function error and the saved booking so if there is an error once again just going to do response dot send error otherwise we'll do response dot json and return our saved booking and that's it now in order for us to test our API we need to go back into our react native app and create a redux action which will communicate with this endpoint to save the booking so let's do that so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a floating action button so this button is what the user will click to make a booking so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into components folder and create a new folder called FAB which stands for floating action button and inside this folder I'm gonna create a new file called index.js which will be our component I'm just gonna copy what we have here and paste it here I'm going to create a new file also called fab styles the JS. I've already created styles for this button so I'm just gonna copy them and paste We'll be importing the styles from fab styles. So I'll need the text, I'll need the view, and I'll also need a button component from native base. And let's just change this to FAB. And this will be on press action, which I will pass through props. 
now I need to export also this FAB component now the next thing I want to do we're just going to return a button which is a native base component and I'm just gonna add some styles to this button I'm just gonna say styles dot fab container so now we need to pass in our action to be on press When I have our own press action and the next thing we're gonna have a text inside our button and we're just going to give it a style of btn text let me just remove this and to simply be book so I'm, just, I'm just gonna change this to FAB and this one to FAB also and we're just going to call this just on top of our footer actually let me just put it here And this will be F A B. Let's just run our app to see if everything is okay. I'm just gonna open a new terminal C D into my app and React Native on iOS. Okay, uh, now our app is running, and as you can see, we have our nice FAB button there. So the next thing we want to do, we want to create the action, so that when the user presses on this button, we're actually going to insert some data inside our bookings collection. So to do that, I'm just gonna go into my home route inside modules and I'm gonna create an action called buka I need I need to paste it here also inside my action constants And I'm just gonna come down here. Just create a new action. So I'm just gonna type in ex export default. And I'll call the function book and I will return dispatch store which will be an arrow function And inside here, I'll create my object, which I'm going to pass to my API. So I'm just going to create a constant, and I'll call it payload. And this payload, I'll have an object called data. And inside this object, uh, because we didn't create any authentication for our app, I'm just going to hard code the username. So my username here, 
we do the Eman and we have the pickup location which we want to format like this we want the address we want the name the latitude and the longitude so the address we're going to take it from from store dot home dot selected address dot selected pickup dot address and our name we're going to take it from the same place dot name the same thing from for latitude and for longitude so what I'm doing here is I'm just formatting the data the way I want to store it inside my document so the drop-off will look pretty much the same I'll just change this to drop off so this will be selected drop off okay and maybe we want to save our fare also So I'm just going to take this from store dot home dot fair and we're just going to pass in the status of the booking so booking can either be pending confirmed or cancelled the booking will be pending until the driver confirms it so I'm just going to type in pending the next thing I want to do is to make use of the API we just created but for now let me just save this and see if I don't have any errors so unexpected token on line 151 line 151 Oh, sorry. This is this is supposed to be export default function. Save. Okay, we are good. So the next thing we want to do is to type in a request. Dot post. And we're going to use our endpoint here. Now this could be something on a separate server, so I'll just copy that URL and paste it here. And then I'm going to do a send, and we're going to send our payload. Next dot finish. Inside here we have our, our error and our response this is an arrow function and we're just going to dispatch we just copy and paste this our action type of booker and our payload will be the response dot body
I need to create a handler for our booker function so to do that I'm just gonna go down here I'm just gonna comment this out and say handle booker let me just copy what we have here let's call this function handle booker inside here we're just going to create our booking object which we're going to set to the action the payload now we need to assign our handler to our booker action Okay, and we also need to map this to props inside our container. It should be stat of home, the booking, and save this. The next thing we want to do is also to make sure our components know that this action exists. I'm just going to pass it here and save. Next, I'm going to go inside my components. Inside my main component, I'm just going to pass this action to on press. Oh, what did we name it? On play section, I'm just going to copy this, paste it here. And then we'll pass in our action. This the props the booker and save. So now let's test it. So I'm just gonna refresh this and I pick up location. And I drop off location. Click book. Oh, we have to fix that error. Let me just check what's wrong here. Oh, this is supposed to be export, not export default. Just save this and refresh. So now if I type in I type in another location and click book this should be now this should now be saved inside our database so if I go here and just refresh now you see we have our booking inside our database with the status of pending so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.